New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi, everybody. Welcome to New Life Live. Steve Arterburn here with Dr. Sherry Keffer, Dr. Daniel Amen, and you. We're glad you're with us. And I have to say a big happy birthday to Misty Arterburn, my wife. Uh, oh. Wow. Uh, here she is. And, and I'm telling you, what a blessing. What a great woman. She changes people's lives, works with women every single week, facilitates groups, and tolerates me. What more? could you ask for so anyway really happy birthday honey love you and of course this program is taped because we are off uh, celebrating her birthday at what is called holiday world wonder what that is well it's like disneyland but rather than west world or all that every section is is divided into a holiday it's really a fun place christmas Halloween, all of that. And 4th of July. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. That is true. (laughs) So we have Dr. Daniel Amen on. We love having him on. Had him back in June. Here he is in July again. You are a life changer and for many people, literally a game changer for all of their lives. And you've helped me greatly because Sherry mentioned to me, maybe Dr. Amen might be able to help you here a little bit with that brain thing you got going. So welcome, Dr. Amen. Glad you're here. Life changer, game changer, brain changer. <laughs> there you well, what a joy to be with both of my friends. <laughs> yeah, we're really glad that you're here. Last time you were here, we finished the program with you talking about some things that anybody could do just to have the best brain uh, possible. Uh, I'd like to do the reverse here and let's start out and let's just identify some things uh, that really aren't very good for a person's brain. If we, and This would give people some hope and help right from the very beginning because you can change whatever you're doing. What would be some of those things not healthy? So on your phone all the time, especially while you're driving, you know, that mm-hmm. gives you two rest factors at once. Being overweight, um, being overweight actually increases four of the significant risk factors that damage your brain. So when mm-hmm. you're overweight, I published two studies that show as your weight goes up, the size of your brain goes down. So that's a bad thing. Um, being Talk overweight. about that, the dinosaur complex. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, it also steals your hormones. It takes healthy testosterone and turns it into unhealthy cancer-promoting forms of estrogen. Oh, wow. So obesity increases the risk of 13 different cancers. Um, fat on your body stores toxins, so you're more likely yep. to have a higher toxic load. Yep. And it produces something called adipokines, which means it's increasing inflammation in your body. Inflammation comes from the Latin word to set a fire. And when people have chronic inflammation, it's like they have a low level fire that's destroying Mm. their organs. So given that 40% of us are obese in this country, 70% of us are overweight, it's the biggest brain drain in the history of our country and it's not okay. It's actually become a national security crisis because people aren't, we're having trouble recruiting enough people for the military because of our unhealthy society. Wow, mm. you know, when you talk about it like that, I don't want to eat that cookie or that donut. Mm. It's, you know? it's a weapon I of mean, mass destruction. I, Costco is actually making a donut cake and it's like, no. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Part of the evil oh, no. ruler I talk about in a new book oh, I'm writing. Goodness. All right. Well, I hope and pray that if you got a question, you'll call us. Uh, if you need a great resource, Feel Better Fast. Make it last. That's available. We've got Memory Rescue, and I uh, hope that you could order those. They're really great, great books. And then we've got a, a book of, um, of verses called Stones of Remembrance. Help you to work on that memory by memorizing God's truth. It's all available. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Most of my life I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? 
Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We are back. Steve Arden, we're here with Dr. Daniel Heyman, Dr. Sherry Keffer. Sherry wrote the book, uh, Intimate Deception, and we would love for you to have a copy of that. You can order that. You can also order Feel Better Fast, Make It Last, Memory Rescue, Stones of Remembrance, all by Dr. Daniel Heyman. And, uh, you, you know, if you need some help with the brain, we want you to get whatever help uh, you need. And to that end, we're going to go to the phones right here. And how about uh, we talk with, well, let's just go to Mary from Cincinnati, Ohio, and uh, she listens on WCVX. Hi, how you doing? Hi. Hi, Mary. Welcome. Okay, should I go on? Yeah, just go ahead. Tell us what's going on and how we could help. Okay. I was uh, married for 30 years to someone who I came to understand has narcissistic personality disorder. I feel like you pretty much just destroy me emotionally mm. and spiritually. No, Sorry. So no. I, uh, I also have a degenerative neurological condition and I'm in a lot of pain every day. And I have no friends. My children have moved away. I, I guess I'm tired of trying. I don't want to live anymore. And I, I don't know why I, it's not okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. Just to make that decision. So you're literally at the point where you you're having to tell yourself not to take your own life. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm really, really glad that you called us, and I think we can give you some help here. How old are you, Mary? Uh, Fifty-eight. And how many kids do you have? I have two. And how they old are they? They live far away. Uh, 34 and 30. And you said they live far away? Yes. And are you close to them or not close to them? Yes. You are yes. close to them? Yes, I am. Okay. They have no idea And what's going on. How long have you been feeling like you don't want to live? Um, a couple of years. And have you gotten Three, any four. professional help? Uh, yeah, I've seen several therapists, and I just don't seem to connect, or they just tell me to go for a walk, or um, I just haven't been successful in finding anybody that's helped me. And when you say you lived with someone that was abusive for 30 years, um, did he hurt you physically? No. So it was uh, 30 years of emotional abuse? Yeah, he was uh, very good, very smart, very subtle. If you read anything on narcissistic personality disorder, that's him. Perfect description. Are you still under the same roof? Are you guys still together? No. Okay. I've been divorced for uh, about three years now. So with getting out of that black web of just horrible pain from the emotional abuse, what has kept you from 
I guess experiencing some relief or freedom. Um, I think it's because uh, for some years she told me how stupid I was and how everything I did was the wrong thing and I didn't dress right, I didn't talk right, I didn't plant flowers right, I didn't so get it Eat right so get it um, i mean it's it's annihilating for the human soul to mm-hmm. go through something like that sure and so this idea of being away from him free from him is almost like having to find you for the first time it really is like having to find yourself after being in some kind of concentration camp for 30 years and not something that uh, most anybody could do on their own. You would most likely need help for this to go well. And the fact that it isn't going well, um, we're going to have to try to help you find the person that could lead you to this place of hope versus a place of you know what we call this learned helpless helplessness state that we're... You just feel like you don't have any options anymore. Yeah, it, well, and the second part of the equation is that I'm a chronic pain patient, and I'm in a lot of pain every day, and I, I'm not handling that aspect of it well either. Mm-hmm. Are you on medication, and, Mary? Uh, yeah. Yes, I am. A what, lot. What do you take? Um, I take Oxycontin and fentanyl and Adipan, uh, Fitergan. Well, well, I think we might have discovered a big part of the problem here. Yeah, I have uh, just for the first time managed to decrease a little bit Mm -hmm. uh, after having had a second surgery. So I'm very glad about that. But I'm still on a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm a person who would much prefer to take less. I, yeah, and less is better. Less People, life is, I don't have the problem of wanting to take more. People don't know that opiates actually increase pain fibers. Um, so it's a short-term fix that causes a long-term problem. And, and there are people, and it sounds like, like you, that have serious real pain and without getting out of the pain people want to die Um, and I completely understand that Um, but you know few people ever really go after what are the natural ways that I can help pain Um, omega-3 fatty acids the supplement SAM E acupuncture hypnosis which I'm a huge fan of to make sure that any I pain patient I acupuncture I didn't I found relief while I was on the table but as soon as I got off it it just came back I do take some supplements um, um, you know I have so many questions is hmm. there a family history of depression in your family yes yes okay because that often sort of loads the gun and it's your what happens to you that pulls the trigger so if you have a family history and then you are an abusive relationship for a long time and you have chronic pain it's really the prescription for a nightmare which you're living i tell all of my patients that um, and this is going to sound harsh and i don't mean it but i'm just telling you how you know if you were in my office in the first three sessions if you have children you love if you kill yourself you've just increased their risk of killing themselves by 500 percent and 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 i never want that to sound harsh but when people get depressed they stop thinking um about others it's like they have blinders on and they only think of getting out of their pain and i want to make sure you don't leave them with more pain than they can handle Mm -hmm. and so um you know, I, I almost hate saying that, but at the same time, I think it's so important to, to get the big picture. And then 
for me, I'd want to look at your brain because the Ativan and the opiates could be suppressing brain activity and in that way decreasing your ability to cope, decreasing your ability to have hope. And if acupuncture actually worked when you were on the table but then didn't last, in my mind, I'm like, um, unless you've gone 30 times, you know, it's like, wow, that can respond and then ever so slowly get the other natural things to deal with the pain so that maybe you can, you know, get as low as possible on the opiates as well. Are you on an antidepressant? Uh, Yes. I don't really have a lot of luck with those. Yeah, and and a lot of people don't because they prescribe them in the dark, that they're not looking at your brain and go, oh, your brain needs this or that. Mm -hmm. Um, There are other kinds of things for depression that have also been found to be helpful for pain. And I guess in the last year or so, well, maybe the last four or five years, ketamine has been found to be incredibly helpful for suicidal thoughts. So Mm. people on the brink that um, ketamine is actually an anesthetic. It used to be, uh, still could be a drug of abuse, but it's helped a lot of people not kill themselves. So come back from the edge. I wish we had um, more time. I'm I'm gonna send you feel better fast, make it last. I want you to hold on. We need to find a counselor for you. I'm gonna send you a life recovery Bible. I think fentanyl oxy. Uh, well, what is it? How do you pronounce it? I, it's hard for me to pronounce. But what the other drug she was Ativan, on? Ativan, fentanyl, oxycontin. Yeah. Fentanyl. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, these these addict people. It's like the innocent addiction. And there is just no good outcome there. The quick fix destroys the long-term solution for chronic pain. It used to run pain centers all over the country. And it just is so tragic when somebody is prescribed one of these medications and, and it just destroys everything. You literally want to die and I am I feel for you I want us to try to help you get with people that can help you maybe we can get you to finding freedom I think that's going to help you but oh I'm so glad you called and I'll ask our folks to pray for you in all that you're going through do not give up if you're going to kill yourself just don't do it today you always can do it tomorrow and when you get to tomorrow just tell yourself not today there is hope it's hard to find it it's hard to experience it but it's there we just have to get you past today and then we're going to find that link find that person find the insight the right kind of treatment but it takes a lot of things and you can't do it alone all right uh, let's go to uh, how about we talk with george from nogal new mexico he's back hey george how are you what's going on I'm doing. I'm doing good. Thanks, Steve. Uh, that's no gal. No gal. All right. Well, <laughs> yes, I, I've been there before. Many cases. Yeah. You have? You Mexico? Well, oh no, or I had no gal, Michigan. and it was a miserable yeah. place to be. Yeah. But anyway, um, <laughs> go ahead. You called. How could we help you today? <laughs> I I'm calling from a son, not from me. Okay. Um, right. And what it is, um, if I may change. What I told the lady a little bit ago, uh, my wife and I have been talking since since then. Um, we have a 29-year-old son, and he has had several head injuries. He's also uh, been injected in the ER with something that he was allergic to. He had an asthma attack, uh, and the fellow injected him and he went on fire he said he burned from the top of his head we were there and watched it it was a really horrific sight um all this to lead up to uh chris used to be on the youtube quite a bit and he got on there and he's a young christian and he tried to um i say argue with or disagree with some people on there, and uh, evidently they are quite popular. 
and they threatened to have him killed or jailed. Now, this is what he says, and he's been on uh, vodka for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, we've tried to get him off, and we've been to, uh, he, he's been to the uh, uh, Salvation Army dry out okay. place in Austin, Texas. Um, he is, he's pretty much a normal individual, but this comes up especially when he is stressed about something um, or frustrated uh, and it will keep him awake he can't sleep okay. without we're gonna, we're gonna give you some help right after this so hang on you're listening okay. to me. I feel blessed to have had this opportunity for my needs to be met connecting with other women who are fighting the same fight hoping for healthy marriages and growing closer to the Lord on their journey. My name is Shelly Martinkus and I want to personally invite you to the Restore Workshop. If you have been affected by betrayal, it might be that your husband has been looking at pornography, it might be an emotional, a physical affair. I would love for you to come join us. I feel encouraged and hopeful that even in my struggle, I am enough. You will leave with hope, with a community of sisters ready to support you, and you will also leave with tools to move you forward on this journey. Through the sharing in our small group, I realize that I am not alone. Please don't hesitate. Pick up the phone, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I would love to see you there. The Restore Workshop is coming to Dallas, Texas, July 19th to the 21st. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to find out more. That's 1-800-639-5433 or online at newlife.com. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. <laughs> Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals, all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arderman here, Dr. Daniel Heyman, Dr. Sherry Keffer. George, uh, you've told us about a lot of problems with your son. What's the question that you have for us for him today? All right, fair enough. Um, his main problem is fear. Uh, we we are a Christian family, we, okay. and we try to instill in him the idea of it, trust is only from God, um, and that's where you can go. But he is he's a very deep thinker, and he has his own way of looking at things. So, so is the is guess, the question how do we de how do we help him deal with fear? Is that the question? Yeah, that's as good. I think that's probably the basic question. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, can let I, us try to help you. Can I just jump in, and then I, I promise I'll let you have the stage here. So I, I have to share something with you I'm a little concerned about, because I think that you're looking at Chris. You said he's kind of more or less a normal kid, but you've got an addict who is living in your home. Right? Is he in your home, or is he someplace else? No, ma'am. He has he has an apartment about uh, twenty miles from us. Okay. Uh, he has a okay. Okay. Is he working, or how is he paying for his apartment? Yes, ma'am. All right. I, I, He's working. So he let has me. Two jobs. Okay. I, I'm just a little concerned because sometimes when somebody is drinking vodka, they can have a vodka induced paranoia a vodka induced fear mm -hmm. the fear you might be seeing might be because he's 
he's hurting his brain through intoxication. And so I yeah. I think he's got an addiction that's not being served well and I don't want you to see him as normal. I want you to see him as a young man who is in desperate need of intervention. So I'm, right. I'm going to do a, a, just a little bit different spin on this. Okay. Because okay. in my mind, having treated thousands of people like your son, if we don't fix his traumatic brain, nothing's going to work. So I, I'm just sitting here writing to myself, traumatic brain injury equals bad judgment, equals anxiety and fear, equals alcohol, which equals a disaster. And so many people, they'll go to a program and it won't work. And it's like, unless we look at his brain, repair his brain, get him, because you said he was bright, get him to fall in love with his brain so he stops damaging it, then, you know, you can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on treatment programs, and then we end up blaming him as, you know, he's not that smart, he's got a bad character, whatever, when if the organ that runs personality, character, and every single decision he makes isn't working right, then he's going to make these bad decisions, which devastates his lives, his life, which then makes you and his mother so sad. So you're saying his trauma brain is working too hard on the inside. He can't quiet it down. And so the vodka helps to quiet that down, but then it complicates things. Then his it makes the damaged brain worse. So your brain, especially the front part of your brain, so I'd predict that's a problem for him, is inhibitory. So what that means is it actually sends signals to your emotional brain to calm it down. And when you damage your frontal lobes, people are anxious, they make bad decisions, which then traumatizes them and makes them more anxious. Makes sense. And then they drink, which then shuts down the damaged part further, which then gives them more trauma. And it's this vicious cycle that until you actually heal their brain, and of course, if you don't look, how the heck would you ever know, if, if unless we heal his brain and get him to be an active um, member. So when I first started scanning people in 1991, I was the director of a substance abuse treatment center. And I loved, their scans were so awful. But I loved it because it gave them the motivation mm. to fall in love with their brain. Nobody loves their brain. Why? Because you can't see it. You can see the wrinkles in your skin or the fat around your belly and you can do something when you're unhappy with that. But because nobody looks at their brain, they just don't care. And you know, it just doesn't matter to them if they're in a fight club or if they're yeah. boxing or if they're jumping out of airplanes Makes and doing sense. stupid stuff. So in my mind, repair his brain and his life is likely to be better. Okay, so just this morning, I was talking with the woman that hired me at the psychiatric hospital I went to work in in 77 that we started treating alcoholics there. And it reminded me that when a person came in who was drinking like this, we in our little lay opinions, we called it a toxic brain, and it took it about four weeks before you could kind of see a shift in their thinking. And, and what we would see and talk about is under this kind of uh, poisoning of the brain, it created emotional augmentation, kind of what Sherry's talking about here. Every emotion was more intense. You weren't just anxious, you were scared to death, or you weren't just sad, you wanted to commit suicide. and so. You free it of this toxic chemical. Now uh, you can start to work on the original problem. But if you're working on anything and you're still putting the poison into the brain, it's never, ever going to get better. And so I'm hoping, I'm going to send a life recovery Bible here. I'm hoping he can go to work on his addiction by taking him or going to meetings with him uh, doing the things on that front that you can do while trying to get some help from a different perspective um, with the Amen Clinic. We'll be back after this. 
My wife had found me out through my past and my sexual addiction since I was a small child. It really gave me the opportunity to start digging into my past, start digging into my childhood, figure out what was causing me to feel the way I was feeling. Every Man's Battle will really give you that opportunity because all the guys there in that room are there for the exact same reason you're there. I don't want to be the reason that my kids are going to counseling. I don't want to be the reason that they begin to struggle with the same issues that I'm struggling with and I've got to put an end to this. Yes, you can be different. God does love you. You can be forgiven for this and there's a way out of this. But you have to acknowledge that you have to change. Yeah, that there's a problem. If you're struggling, call us. There are people on the other end of the line who want to hear from you, who want to help you. We don't want you to hand down something to another generation that just looks like pain and destruction. You can hand down redemption, but you got to take that first step. Just give us a call. It's 1-800-639-5433. It's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back to Steve Arterburn here. Speaking of brain health, Larry Sonnenberg is in the uh, studio. Larry, <laughs> how you doing? Doing good, Steve. Thanks. Talk to us about our need right here today. Yeah, well, our need is to keep working on this uh, matching gift that we have. We're, we're making progress. Um, as a recorded program, I'm estimating that at the time of this recording, we're going to be over 50% matched, which is good. Maybe we'll be way over that if we get a couple of nice gifts. But every gift that you give will be doubled if you will help us match this gift. Mm -hmm. $10 is 20, 50 is 100, you know, 1,000 is 2,000. Whatever you do, it will be twice that much. And, and if you want to give your end of the year giving now, boy. it's a perfect time to do it. It still it goes sure on is. your taxes you. for next year, That's but right. it's a great Good way point. to Thank double you, your end of the year. It really is. And uh, Larry, you always uh, bring a reason to give or the yeah. purpose of the ministry and what it goes to. Ta I okay. bet you have a testimony here. Yeah, this was written by a guy who had attended Every Man's Battle. The amount of experience and knowledge that was poured into me was totally astonishing. Each and every word was directed by God straight into my heart. Just learning and beginning to understand the reasons and motivations behind my behavior has been worth it to me. At this point, I feel encouraged and excited to get started on my battle plan. I'm forever <coughs> changed by this weekend experience and grateful to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hmm. If you can get behind that, if you want more people to experience life change, uh, please help us. This radio program, the workshops, people going to counselors, the books and audio and video things that we have resources for you, all of it is targeted to help you experience a new way of life. And so please help. Give us a call. Yep. Go online. And uh, this matching gift will be a big deal. Also, Club New Life. We've got eight books. If you join Club New Life, we've got uh, all kinds of video that is are you a benefit for joining. We need your help, and thank you for everybody who is helping. Give us a call, please. Okay, it's one eight hundred New Life. If you want to help transform somebody's life, this is the place to call one eight hundred New Life. Support us, help us. And we're so grateful to everybody that does help us. Thank you so much. All right, let's go back to the calls. Let's talk to George Aurora, Colorado. Hey, George, how you doing? I'm uh, doing fine. How are you? Doing okay. Um, how can we help? Uh, this question is about my son, my youngest son, who is 33. 
Okay. He uh, he had an accident when he was four, ended up in a coma for about two weeks, uh, was pronounced dead twice. Oh, hmm. wow. But the, the, the doctor who, uh, who helped him, she told my wife and I that when he came out of it and everything they thought was going to be all right, she said he could have problems later on down the road or he may not have any at all. But he's having them, and he's married and has three kids. He gets uh, real angry. He uh, gets depressed, and even more so since my wife passed away. But uh, all these things are coming back on him, is uh, the depression, the anger issues, uh, just everything that I can think of. And you were talking to a, a lady earlier that she was mentioning things that I see in my son where he forgets things and he and his wife my daughter-in-law told me that he reads and forgets what he reads immediately after it and and anything sets him off i mean it's like he uh, you could say something and that'll set him off and he'll get angry we notice when he's on medication he's better and it, it takes him a little bit but when he goes off his medication which if he's off for about two or three weeks, then we can see everything start coming back. Okay. So what's the question for us then? We are trying to figure out what we need to do to try and help him or make it better for him. Or We, we need to help. We need to, we need to find out what we can do to help him. Yeah, whenever anybody in a family suffers everybody suffers you bet. and uh, the traumatic brain injury is probably really important it probably affected his temporal lobes so your temporal lobes are underneath your temples and behind your eyes they're critically important and when they get damaged people have mood instability irritability temper problems dark thoughts uh, often suicidal thoughts they have memory problems learning problems um and you know so i think y you should look at it you know should we image his brain to make sure um of what's going on and then things like hyperbaric oxygen can be really helpful certain medications especially anti-seizure medications like trileptal or lamictal um, can help stabilize that area of the brain um, the injury stole his reserve. So all of us have a certain amount of reserve in our brain, and but things like injuries and stress, um, losing your mother, um, mm. it, if you don't have much reserve in your brain because of the injury, then those things can really take you down. But, you know, the exciting thing that we've learned from our work is that you're not stuck with the brain you have. You can make it better. This fall, I'm in a new movie called Quiet Explosions, and it's phenomenal. They follow 10 patients. Three of them are mine. Hall of Fame running back Anthony Davis, who irritable, couldn't remember things, developed OCD because he never remembered if he locked his door, Super Bowl MVP quarterback Mark Rippon. Um, and the, the beautiful thing about the movie is we saw these people who had incredible trauma completely heal. And, and what did they do? What did they do so to they did what that kind of traumatic turnaround? Well, and maybe his son can do the same. I got brain envy was one thing. <laughs> so in my book, Memory Rescue. So mm -hmm. if your brain, if you want to keep your brain healthy or mm -hmm. rescue it, if it's headed to the dark place right. and George's son's brain is in the dark place, yeah. um, you have to prevent or treat the 11 major risk factors that steal your mind. And I talk about that in Memory Rescue. But what's really important that nobody knows is that when you have a bad head injury, it actually damages your pituitary gland. Your pituitary mm. gland is the master hormone gland. Okay. And so it wouldn't surprise me 
me at all if George's son didn't have really low levels of hormones. And okay. often replacing those can make a huge positive difference. So that's just one of those 11 things that, that we talked about. And so I think, Steve, sending him memory rescue will help. If you can get him to one of our Amen clinics around the country, that will help. And it's just such a good investment because what is it costing the family mm. in long-term yeah. therapy costs, I right? Know. If, well, uh, and you then know. you're hearing that he he gets better on the medication yeah, but then right. stops taking it. I'm like, why? Because what? nobody wants to be sick. Right, I mean, it's so common that you and I see, we see this among teenage diabetics all the time, right? They end up killing themselves because nobody wants to be sick and no one's showing him his brain that's hurt that could be better. So okay, I'm, so we have a lot of people call us. We've had a lot of people call us when you've been on. If anybody could benefit from coming to you or one of your clinics getting scanned it's this guy i mean this totally if, it could i mean it could give him a, a reason to take I mean, the medication yeah. right it mm. could show him such like, insight and yeah. give him hope give him hope that he can have a better brain i can't wait for your quiet explosion to come out i actually think that's going to give so many people like this family incredible hope that you can change you, you right know, i was a consultant on the movie concussion which yes, was were, about you know, this war between my friend Bennett Amalo and the NFL. And I was written into the script of the movie, but and, and ended up being written out of it. And it, the movie's sort of a bummer in that there's no hope. Mm. But what we have seen, and many other people have seen, there's tremendous hope of healing traumatic brain injury. You just have to put the brain in a healing environment, which means care. And we talked to, uh, to another caller whose son had a traumatic brain injury who was drinking alcohol. So that is not putting it in a healing yeah. environment. No. And, and you know, when, when I went to you, one of the things that is, and I think it would benefit him, is you hear, oh, th this thing, and you go, oh, well, no wonder. Well, now this makes sense. That's why I do these things. And what a relief that is that, you know, I, I'm doing what other people have done in similar situations. And I think he would feel such relief to know, yeah, okay, now let's, let's do the things that could help the most. And then you're not going to have to be doing these things anymore. I, I will send you a memory rescue. Uh, I'm going to send you also stones of remembrance. I hope that that will be a blessing to you and your son. Let's get you into one of the Amen clinics there. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back right after this for more of New Life. Last year after every man's battle, I was so moved by the transformation that I saw, not only in myself, but in the guys in our small group and the other people that were there and the stories that I heard that I decided to go ahead and join Club New Life as a contributor to that. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. Because we're doing God's work here, you're restoring marriages, you're giving people hope. It's just been such a blessing to me, and I just wanted to encourage you all. When you see something good that God's doing, just jump on that and help support that. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433. Give your support to them if you can, and, and just help them do what God's doing here in the, in the world. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. I came into this thinking that my husband was the cause of many of our issues. The New Life Intimacy and Marriage Workshop is coming to Washington, D.C. June 28th to the 30th. But after learning about our attachment styles, I understood how our past hurts were playing into our present problems. Join Steve Arterburn. It's been a dream of mine for a long time to help people to grow more intimately together. And we believe that everybody 
has room to grow in the intimacy level of their life. And Mylan and Kay Yurkovich, we help couples understand how their attachment style is sabotaging their current relationship. And then we teach them how to create comfort in a relationship. To register to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or go to newlife.com. Here at this workshop, we had our first ever conversation without yelling, blaming, and accusing. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Rexy Barterman here, and let me remind you, when you make a gift in July, it will be matched. And we'll send you a thank you gift by one of our great friends, colleagues, Dr. John Townsend. His new book, People Fuel, we've had John on, he's talked about it. I love this book, great cover, great concept. If this is the part of life where you fuel up your life with other people, and John does a great job here. It's our way of saying thank you for helping us help other people people all right i think we've got time maybe uh for one more phone call here and uh let's go to paula kansas city missouri and uh, hi paula how are you hi i'm doing fairly well today thanks good how can we help well um first of all i'd like to do a shout out to dr amen and i think he's heard from me before but um he is a stellar pioneer, you know, of the sex scan, and I just want to tell him I'm so proud of him for doing that before we had to wait on the studies from the universities, and I wish he got credit for for how much better it, job it does of, um, you know, taking a look at the brain. So that's one thing yeah. I wanted to do. We but give I, him all the credit around here. <laughs> well, he should. I just wish the world would, see. But he's, you know... Uh, I, I met his dad and mom on the elevator when I was at, I went in Santa, is it Santa Rosa? Wait. Yes. And they said, uh, or, you know, he, he's, he's a maverick, right? <laughs> yes. So. Okay. Yeah. How can we anyway, help you though? Uh, okay. I, um, was diagnosed with Cushing's after several years, basically had it 15 years probably. Um, what is anyway, that? So I'm just tell everybody what that is. Uh, well, it's the pituitary gland um, has a tumor the size of a piece of rice, and it affects uh, probably 90% of the body. Um, it morphs the body inside and out, basically. Um, and so it's so rare that there's only five in a million um, diagnoses. And um, so... I, uh, there's lots of mental impairments that come from that, uh, a lot of mental health um, issues as far as depression, anxiety, and then also, Dr. Amy, I, ha I have ADHD, and so with me being 60 years old, ADHD and Cushing's, the mental impairments that I'm having are really scaring me because I have big plans for, um, for this ADHD program that, that I want to do and so I created it three years ago and then my mental impairments have been such and my fatigue that you know I, I still have Cushing's I'm not sure yet I had surgery. okay so what's the question for Dr. Amen and us here for Dr. Amen is um I have MRIs and I've had anesthesia and again I have ADHD I'm 60 years old and these mental impairments, I'm wondering if, will I be able to um, repair them and heal? And his opinion on me continuing to get the MRI, or he has an opinion on the anesthesia as far as, uh, you know, reducing the risk of the white matter, because I, uh, I, I we do know that from looking at the x-rays okay the MRI. all right paula great question really important cushing's is a disorder where your body produces too much cortisol and cortisol is important it's uh, sort of part of the fight or flight response that um, a little bit is critical for you to deal with an anxious or stressful situation too much puts fat around your belly it uh, damages the hippocampus, the major memory structure 
in the brain and it's clearly not good for you. Mm -hmm. And so getting the Cushing's treated so you can get your cortisol in a healthy range is really important. But you said um, something, many things that are important. Uh, having ADHD usually goes along with low frontal lobe function, low function in the cerebellum, which is the major processor in the brain. So getting that treated, and I would think of that as separate, but you should get that treated. And anesthesia, and what n nobody seems to know, even though there's a lot of literature on it, you go to pubmed.com, that's from the National Library of Medicine, type in anesthesia and learning problems, you're going to see kids who have anesthesia have a higher incidence of ADHD and learning problems. Mm. People who have anesthesia have a higher incidence of dementia. And, you know, some studies say yes, some say no, but controversy to me means less anesthesia is better you want to live a healthy lifestyle so you don't need the coronary artery mm -hmm. bypass surgery so putting your brain paula in a healing environment uh remember well you know the one question to ask yourself is this good for my brain or bad for it is just critical to heal your brain and so I think my book, Memory Rescue, would just be great for you. And anybody that has a neurological disorder, um, from Cushing's to Parkinson's disease to Alzheimer's disease uh, to a stroke, should always be thinking about putting their brain in a healing environment to activate the brain's healing mechanisms. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm, I'm really glad you called, and I, I hope and pray somebody else struggling in this area, you might decide, okay, Memory Rescue, maybe that would be a great, great book for me. Uh, I love that book, and uh, I'm trying to rescue my memory, and it's just something that there's no downside to anything that's there uh, in that book. It's all upside. It's all for the better. And so if you need a copy, we've got them. You can order them from us. Uh, Dr. Amen, as we close out, and Dr. Keffer, anything you want to say encouraging to anybody about taking care of and improving their brain? You know, you talk about putting your brain in a healing environment. The picture I got, the word picture in my head, was like her and many others that have brains that are susceptible it's like a sea anemone you know you want to they're they're susceptible you so you have to take care of it you know a lot of times i think we think about our brain as a, a brick or something that uh, isn't going to be hurt but if you think about it more like a sea anemone that needs to be fed cultivated um cared for tenderly loved uh, it's really, they're hardy. It, the brain is amazingly hardy. But for vulnerable brains, you really do need to pay extra special attention and care. Or even think yeah. of it like a seahorse. So hippocampus yeah. is Greek for seahorse. And it's one of the few areas of your brain that actually makes 700 new baby cells every day. So I think of That's them as crazy. baby seahorses. <laughs> and are you, and is it in an environment where you're going to grow the seahorses so they can right. become strong and you can have a vibrant brain, a vibrant mind? Or are you damaging the seahorses, damaging your brain, and then damaging your potential mm. well not not i don't think there's anybody here uh, that if you've got a problem on the other end of your body your feet you you know you and dr shoal you go and you get it taken care <laughs> of your feet. but dr amen is the dr shoal of the cranium i mean he <laughs> is the guy that fixes the other end and let's give as much attention to the brain as we do to our feet because it's so vital and this is the thing that the lord uses to literally transform our minds but how can you transform if, if your whole life if the mind isn't part of that transformation so we want to build it we want to repair it we want to keep it in as good a shape as possible you call us 1-800-NEW-LIFE we can get you the books we can put you in touch with the amen clinic we can find a counselor that understands brain function I would love for you to come join me, Misty, my wife, and Mylon K. Yurkovich this weekend, Washington, D.C., Intimacy in Marriage Intensive. Thank you, Dr. Amen. We appreciate all that you do. Thank you, Dr. Sherry Keffer, for bringing Dr. Amen our way. 
See you next time. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live.